So my name is Eric Porter. Um, I'm the head of financial well-being with WageStream. Um, I've been around WageStream for a long, long time. Um, and so it's great to see, you know, every time we run one of these sessions, more and more people getting involved. Um, okay, so six weeks ago, we ran a session and six weeks ago, um, unfortunately, sometimes my job when I'm talking to you guys feels like I can be the head of doom and gloom. I don't want to be the head of doom and gloom. Um, I also am a person who likes to be right, but I wish sometimes I wasn't right when I'm talking about the cost of living, right? So everything we said was going to happen in terms of inflation, energy prices, interest rates, all of those things, it all happened. I just want once in the next few weeks or months, someone please prove me wrong. Um, and maybe some of that will start tomorrow. Um, but there's been a lot that's happened since we, we chatted six weeks ago. Um, and if you haven't been able to, or weren't able to join us six weeks ago or haven't seen the video, there's a couple of ways that you can access that. One of the ways is going to the coach tab in the app. And under the cost of living tile, the video is there. So you can go back and watch it. And the great thing about watching it is it's in YouTube. So you can turn it up to one and a half or two times. So if I'm talking too slow for you. If you're short on time and you want to run it, uh, watch it back a little bit quicker, you can do that in the app. So what has happened in the last six weeks? Well, a lot, right? And for anybody who's been listening to the news or reading in the media, um, you see that you know it's not letting up in terms of the speed with which change is occurring. Um, but we got that confirmation around the energy price cap. And the energy price cap was confirmed at £3,549. Now, don't worry about that amount. It doesn't mean anything to most of us as individuals other than our energy bills are going to go up. Um, that's based on an average family. The media loves those numbers because they can be scary. Um, but at the end of the day, what those numbers really signify is the price cap for an average family. You define average family, right? So you may or may not be in that average family. You could be living alone. You could be living in a house share with six people. All of our situations are different. What's important is when we think around the guide here is that the unit price is going up, the standing charge is going up, and for most of us, our bills are going to go up. Now, we know that we just got a new prime minister yesterday, um, and regardless of how you feel politically, tomorrow, you're going to get some information around what that price cap might be changed to, or some other government assistance that might be coming out to help you. And it would have been really good if, you know, Liz and the government could have coordinated with us because then we could have told you that today, but um, you know they weren't available. So what we're going to do to make sure that you have the latest information after today's session is when we send out that email with the link to the recording, we'll also give you um, some bits there around anything that's changed from what we say today. And also for those of you who are in our Facebook group, or if you're not, you can join our Facebook group called Money Matters. You'll be able to go out there and view the information and any changes either that affect what I'm saying today or that maybe we didn't cover at all because it's completely new. So watch out for that. So energy price caps gone up. I'm already seeing a comment here. Energy bills are higher than my mortgage payment. How will anybody afford to buy and run a home? Very, very good question. Um, thanks for putting that in there. And yeah, um, that is the reason why we're getting some of this help tomorrow. Now that does still mean for most of us, our bills will have gone up some amount um, back in April. Um, but hopefully we're not going to see them go up to the level that they were expected to go up as of um, October the 1st. But yeah, the, the, the prices are higher. I'd also like to sit here and tell you that I'm going to give you loads of tips to go out and save a bunch of money on your everyday shopping and things that you're already doing. And that's going to be able to offset those increases. That might have been true a couple of years ago. It's not true now. So the only way to actually offset some of the price rises and actually get you real help is by government inter government intervention, and that's what's happening tomorrow. Okay, so we've got energy bills, help to be reviewed. The one piece of help that we know is coming is what you see down in the lower box, which is there was that 400 pound was gonna be a loan, now it's a grant. They've kind of started to think about how they're gonna pay that. At the moment, we're expecting that to start coming out in October, so you'll see that as a credit on your energy bills if you pay by direct debit. You'll get 66 or 67 pounds a month on your bill um, as a credit through March of next year. If you're on an energy meter or prepayment meter, and it's one of the smart prepayment meters, that credit will be applied. If it's not, you'll be sent a voucher. If you're not sure which one of those that you're on, then now would be a great time to reach out to your supplier and say, how are you going to get me my money? Now, 
it could very well be that in tomorrow's announcements that they tell us they're going to do something different with that amount of money or distribute it differently or that it's going to go up or down. Um, so don't be surprised if that changes. But as of today, we're expecting some amount of money to be coming on to energy bills um, from October to help offset the price um, increase in energy. Okay, so what about borrowing? What's going on there? So we talked last time and we'll continue to talk about as interest rates go up and we had an interest rate increase on August 4th, they went from 1.25% to 1.75%. That's what we call the base rate. So that um, went up to now 1.75%. Um, so pretty big jump. It's a bigger jump than we've seen in quite a long time. And that means a couple of things for, for people. For one, anyone who's got a mortgage, that means that if you're on a variable rate mortgage, your payment will go up immediately. If you are due to end your fixed term mortgage at some point in the near future, and we know that there are over a million customers who are expecting that to happen still this year, that means your interest rate will likely go up um, at that point. And some of those deals, if you run a really good deal, like on a 1.5% or 2% mortgage deal, they're not going to be there. And the other thing is not just for mortgage holders, but also if you rent. So, you know, most of you, if you're renting, your rent is paying for someone else's mortgage, usually your landlord, right? Um, and so at some point, maybe not now, but whenever it's allowed contractually, your landlord's probably going to be knocking on the door saying, I need to increase your rent. So again, it affects all of us. We again talk about in the media a lot around mortgages, but mortgages have a much larger impact on, on all of us. Um, the other thing that's happening as borrowing and interest rates go up is we are seeing credit card interest rates go up, right? So the average credit card has gone from 18% to 19.9%. I think it was about the same last time we shared that last time. And we are now expecting interest rate reviews to happen kind of every six weeks or so. So the Bank of England will meet every six weeks. And you see the little dates down here on the bottom of the slide to just kind of give you a guide around what's set to happen, where you see BOE, that is Bank of England. Um, so every six weeks or so, depending on what inflation is doing, then rates might go up. So we might be in this environment for quite some time where mortgage rates keep going up and, um, and, and things getting a bit more expensive. This is also can be a bit difficult for people because you get into a position where maybe you're sitting here today and I actually had a coach client. Um, one of our users came in this morning on coach and said to us, um, I've got a mortgage. It's not due to end until next year, but actually it might be better for me to go ahead and pay the um, early, the exit fee that many banks charge to exit your mortgage um, and, and, and get one now. And actually doing some of those sums and the maths of that can get quite complex. And we were able to give her a tool and give her some information so she can go off and make that decision. We can't give financial advice, but at least show you or her, uh, that person in, in that case to how to work out those types of things. So for those of you who have access to, live, to Coach Live, that's one of the things you can do is come in and, and ask us. Um, otherwise, there are, there are sites out there and calculators you can use. So it's... Um, yeah, tough times in, in the mortgage market. And that's all linked again then to this inflation rate, which we see here at 10.1% was what, what it was for July. So prices are going up at about that rate. One thing to remember that that's an average. So for some of you, you might be saying, well, actually my costs have gone up 25% or 30% because you know maybe you drive a lot and the price of petrol is pushing things, um, pushing things up. Or you, depending on where you shop and different types of food, or you know, if you've you know, had more children or um, you know, kids going back to school now, all different things that are happening, 10.1% um, is not necessarily the number that all of us will experience, can be higher for some and lower for others. So still lots going on. As the slide says, more to come, stay tuned, starting tomorrow. Um, and then our, of course, our plan will be to be back here in about six weeks time to um, share with you any other changes. And if there are important changes before then, then, then we'll be in touch. I'm just gonna take a quick look um, at our questions that are coming in. Most of our questions we will take at the end, but please feel free to keep um, pumping them in here so that we've got some to go with. It's great to see so many coming in. Um, yeah, there's a couple of others. I'm gonna come back and deal with those at the end. So but thank you, keep them coming. So that's our cost of living update. I feel like I should get some dramatic music, you know, at the BBC behind me when, I, when I'm talking about this, um, maybe next time. Um, what we really want to talk about today is being a bit more savvy. Now, as, as I said, I'm not going to give you tips that are going to go and change your life to 
find an extra 300 pounds a month so that you can now pay your energy bill. Um, that would have definitely been possible two or three years ago when we were running sessions like this, we would have said to people, you know, change your energy provider, go do this, go do that. And, you know, because you were trying to fill a gap of maybe 50 or 100 pounds in your monthly budget. But now we're in a position where you're filling quite a bigger gap. Um, and just saving, you know, 15 pounds on your shopping each month is not going to solve your energy bill issue or your overall bills issue with inflation. But we still think it's really, really important that you can be savvy and that you, you know, shop around, especially like what I said with the mortgages. Um, if that describes you and the situation that you maybe find yourself in, or if you're a person who's got that credit card, who's been notified that your rate's going to go up from 18% to 19.9%, part of being a savvy consumer is knowing where to go and, and how to shop around for those products. So we're going to spend a bit of time talking about that today. Some of you are already doing this and you probably, you know, some of you have made a, a sport out of it, perhaps in terms of shopping around. It can be for some of you and me, because when you're a bit of a nerd like I am, um, it can be a bit addictive, you know, comparing all these things and checking and seeing what's going on or whatever. Um, and, and so that's great. That's going to make sure that you get the best deal. Um, th there are some really uh, good places that you can go to look for information. So when we're thinking of things like mobile, TV, um, if you have a landline, broadband, any of those types of things, there are sites out there like Uswitch that you can go and you can find good deals or better deals um, by using that site. You can punch in your postcode, what it is that you want in terms of internet speed or different TV channels, those different things, and Uswitch is going to recommend some things for you. Now, obviously, we have some limitations when it comes to telecommunications. Often that is the limitation of wherever you're based, right? Wherever you live. Just because you want it doesn't necessarily mean um, you can have it, or they might say it's available, but actually when you do a bit more research that you figure out that actually it's not available or it won't work. So I'm a perfect example of that. There are only a couple phone companies. Every one of them will sell me a mobile SIM card, but there's only about two that I can even get in the reception in my house here. Um, and so it's really important to kind of couple both the the shopping around for mobile and, and telephone and TV with what's actually realistic for your area. The other thing is that you can do in the app is the broadband element of this. Today, live for all of you, you can go in and shop around for a broadband package and you see a kind of a, a view of what that looks like in the app there. So that's one thing you can do while you're in, you know, streaming or setting up your savings or chatting with a coach or whatever um, the, the reason is that you happen to be in the WageStream app, you can go in and um, check for broadband, or that could be your sole reason for coming in because you want to switch your broadband. So, so have a look there. Okay. The other thing is using other comparison sites in terms of financial products, whether that's a credit card, a new bank account. Um, something people don't do enough of is change their bank account. So a lot of you've probably been with your bank for forever, and maybe it was because that's the bank account you got as a student, or because your parents always banked with Barclays, you now bank with Barclays, or whatever the reason might be. Or maybe you were new to the UK a couple of years ago, and they were the only bank that would give you an account because banks aren't always that nice to people when they move to the UK. Um, but now you can switch, <clears throat> excuse me, Really good thing is to go in and check. Many banks will actually pay you to switch, right? So banks like First Direct and some of the others out there, I think even NatWest now and a couple of the others will give you 100 or 150 pounds just to switch your bank account. So go in and look for those kinds of offers. It's free money, assuming that they have a product that you want that's suitable for you. If you're looking for credit cards, mortgages, as I mentioned, loans, any other kind of financial product, also really important to spend some time looking on sites like Money Supermarket, or go compare. Really, really important though, that whenever you're using any of these comparison websites, please take a moment to figure out how they make money. And often if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there will be something there around how they make money or commissions or rates or charges. They'll have something down there hidden, um, but, but if you look hard enough, you'll find it. And it will usually explain to you how they make money and how the information is presented to you. Because some of the sites, Take Money Supermarket as an example, they actually do a pretty good job of displaying to you what's most suitable for you based on the information that you've put in. Now they can't know everything about you, um, especially because they usually get from you joining the, or coming onto the website to giving you a suggestion, you know, in only a couple of clicks and putting in some information. 
um, but they do a pretty good job. Other sites tend to rank their options by how much commission they get paid, right? Because they're not charities, they're there to make money. They are you know, going to then provide you solutions for what they think is best for them. Or maybe if that provider has paid them more to be at the top of that league table, then, then that will be displayed. So kind of one of my principles as a consumer, no matter what I'm shopping for, no matter what I'm doing, I'm just a bit skeptical, right? Skeptical, cynical, whatever you want to call it. I go onto those sites thing, how is, thinking, how is this person trying to take my money? And do I want to part with my money? So if you kind of approach it like that, you'll spend a bit more time maybe digging around and finding the right solution. But by all means, it does make sense to shop around and you can find better deals by shopping around. Okay, another place that would be obvious to do it would be when you have things like home contents insurance or car insurance. The next time that you get that um, renewal notice from that organization, don't just immediately renew it or ignore it so that it auto renews. And in fact, if you've got auto renewal enabled that you go in now and turn off auto renewal so that it forces you to engage with, with it whenever it's up, but that would be a great time for you to go and shop around a bit, okay? Um, and then there's other sites like Quidco or Top Cashback, some of you may have heard of. Some of you might also work for employers that have kind of cashback or voucher sites, different things. These can also be a really good source of getting some discounts or other information. Um, but it's worth saying that um, if you, you also want to check those offers with offers that are available outside, because sometimes the cashback uh, sites in particular, the cashback site will say, oh, well, you buy this insurance policy, we'll give you 50 pounds cash back. But if you go directly to that company, it's 50 pounds cheaper. So some of them you know, play a little bit of a game in terms of where you come in and, and how they, they have to pay for that. Um, so it is worth checking in a few different places. Um, in terms of cash back if you're using those sites. So that's just a few tips for you um, in terms of what you can do. I see a question here about it. Can you explain what inflation is and how it affects people? Yes, I'm gonna come back to that at the end. So a good question, thank you. Okay, so that's comparison shopping. So that's one way we can save money and be a bit more savvy. The next thing is for all of you who are using the app, um, and hopefully most of you have downloaded the WageStream app because your employer um, has joined WageStream for you. Um, if you haven't, now would be a great time to download the app, um, activate it, go in. Even if you're not necessarily gonna need to stream money, all of these other tools are available to you. And one of those tools that we're building um, and most of you will have access to now is discounts through vouchers, right? So again, in this time where we're trying to save money, especially on things like a food shop, right? A food shop can, is, is getting quite expensive. We have the opportunity for you to go in and get vouchers to kind of most of the leading brands in terms of um, retailers for, for, for groceries. You can save quite a bit. Um, the, the vouchers are directly on your phone instantly. Um, you can stream them from your pay in terms of how you pay for them. And all of the details and how you access, um, <clears throat> excuse me, how you access those vouchers are, are in the app for you. But really, really worth taking a moment to look at and seeing what's available um, for whatever um, grocery store that you shop at. What's really nice also is that you see some of the brands that are there, like Aldi and Asda, you know, where, where many of us already turn often to get lower amounts, and you don't often see. Um, in Aldi and Little and some of the some of the other chains that maybe necessarily they have like customer loyalty programs or a lot of discounts available. Um, this is one way to to get discounts um, that might not be available to everyone. So again, a benefit of, of being a WageStream user, WageStream member. I and mean, if you haven't downloaded the app, that might be a good reason for you to start now. Okay, so discounts on everyday purchases can be good. Also, just thinking about food, continuing with that theme. Um, lots of ways to, to try and save. And I don't know about you, so I spend way too much time on TikTok. I'll admit it. Um, I should spend less time on TikTok. Um, and because of the type of stuff that I'm typically looking at when it comes to finance and shopping and those things, I seem to get a lot of videos on TikTok with now people doing comparison price shops, you know, between what's a pint of milk at Sainsbury's versus what's a pint of milk at M&S or somewhere else, which is actually really helpful. Um, but, and, and, and the reality is, it's actually quite complex to save money. So you might kind of be pre-programmed to think, oh, well, you know what, Tesco is always going to be cheaper than Sainsbury's, and Vanessa is always going to be more expensive, Waitrose is always going to be more expensive. 
it's not always the case. In fact, I've seen quite a few recently where people were going to M&S and buying milk and a few other things, and they were considerably cheaper than Tesco or Sainsbury's. And I actually was surprised by that because I expect if I walk into M&S and buy something, I'm probably going to leave having spent quite a bit of money. Um, but so this is where what it is actually quite difficult to be a savvy consumer. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time that many of us may not have. It takes a lot of headspace. So, you know, vouchers is one way to save money. Shopping around is the other way. If you're fortunate enough to live in an area where you have lots of supermarkets in one place, or maybe you've got an out of town retail park that you can go to and there's four or five of them nearby um, and you can hit them, then great. If you're living a bit more remote or in an area that's not as well served, then that might be a bit more of a challenge, but um, joining loyalty programs is one way that can, can help. So you can join Nectar, Tesco Club Card, Little Plus, and then there are others. I know that there are a lot of things out there. So if I take, um, I typically shop at Sainsbury's because it's closest to my house. Um, they have lots of personal pricing. So if the eggs that I normally buy are three pounds and I use my Nectar card, then um, then they're only going to be, you know, two pounds 25 or something. So sometimes the discounts are quite significant. So worth me doing that. Now, what am I giving up for that? Well, they're getting lots of data and they're using that data for whatever they use it for, to sell it to other people or to market more stuff to me. As long as you go into that eyes wide open, knowing your data is going to be used, and that's why they offer these discounts. That's why loyalty programs exist, is to get data that they can use for other things, mainly marketing to you, um, then that's fine. If you're not interested in being spammed by all of their offers and all of those different things, obviously you can go in and change your notification settings, or what I do is I have a separate email address where all that junk just goes into and I never read it, right? It doesn't cost you anything to set up a new Gmail address or something like that, um, but some of the discounts are, are absolutely worth it. So worth doing that. A newer site that's out there is trolley.co.uk. It's another place where you can go and do some of this comparison shopping online, um, which is really handy. So you know, maybe it's a bit of a drive for you to get to where you want to go in terms of being able to get to that out of town retail park to, to save money. Well, go and put your basket on trolley.co.uk, do a bit of comparison shopping and figure out, is it actually worth me making that trip out there? Am I going to save enough um, to, to offset the petrol costs and the time and all of that? So that's a good site that you can use. Being willing to shop at more than one store can really, really help, but obviously takes more time, might not be nearby, et cetera. Um, Consider switching to supermarket brands. So I, the statistic I saw, and I've forgotten it now, but there is, it was something like a 23 or 25% increase in people switching to supermarket brands. Now, some of you are probably shouting at the screen right now saying, oh, I'm never going to eat, you know, the, the Tesco basic, whatever it might be. Um, and I absolutely get that. For some things, you don't want to switch, right? You, you Whether that's you, you love Heinz baked beans, or maybe you absolutely have to have, you know, Heinz ketchup, and you're not willing to have Tesco ketchup or whatever. I completely get it. But sometimes at least try it and maybe see, maybe the store brand is better or the same at least, because sometimes those store brands are made by the same companies. Um, I'm not asking anyone to, you know, have to stomach something they don't like or that doesn't taste good. But if you have the opportunity to at least give it a try, then switching to a store brand um, might absolutely be the right thing to help you. Avoiding convenience foods can be a really good way to save money. So I'm often surprised at the number of people when I'm walking through the supermarket who are buying pre-chopped onions, pre-chopped garlic, pre-chopped all of these kind of things. And I think you're paying quite a significant premium for that. Buy an onion, chop it up buy some garlic, chop it up. Um, again, some people may not have the time. I absolutely understand why people want to, to have convenience foods, but that's another area where you can easily um, shave off some cost or cooking a meal versus buying ready meals. Because as we've seen with inflation, some of the things that have gone up the highest are actually not just the fresh food, but some of those ready meals and things, especially if they're being shipped in from different places, um, those prices have gone up quite significantly. So um, that might be hitting you a little bit harder if you're a person who buys a lot of ready meals or convenience foods. Those great yellow stickers. So some of you know some people there are Facebook groups dedicated to this. People you know waiting for those reduced stickers to come onto food at a certain time. They you know some people who are really savvy. They know exactly four o'clock by supermarket. They come around, they label everything, and they run and get all the reduced stuff. But again, a really good way to to get stuff um, cheaper. And then there's other apps out there like Olio, which you may have heard of, or Too Good to Go. Too Good to Go in, in in particular, which I've used. And so I live in London, so it's quite easy for me, may or may not be easy for you, but 
loads of places that get rid of food at a discount price at the end of the day. So if I take an example, the Costa coffee up the road, um, you can pay something like four pounds and you get, you know, 10 or 15 pounds worth of food at the end of the day. Um, and it might be things like toaster sandwiches or, uh, you know, baked goods, those different things. The risk, of course, is you don't know what you're going to get day to day. But depending on the area that you're in, you know, you might find that you get three or four sandwiches from that place. And actually, maybe that's good enough for you then to take. And that's your lunch for the next day or the next day or two for work if you're, you're needing to take a packed lunch or something like that. So um, explore, play with it um, and see if it works for you in your area. Um, and it's just another one of those those things that can help. Okay. And I think now that I've, we didn't do the poll, Hattie. So can I ask you to put up the poll for um, benefits, please? Yes. And the keen people will have seen my slide flip quickly and got the answer, so shame on me. There we go, polls live for you guys to have a little guess at the question. 76% of wage stream users are eligible for an average of how much in unclaimed benefits? What do you think? Okay, we've got a lot coming in. And anyone who was here six weeks ago has a distinct advantage because we absolutely covered this. Okay, still a lot coming in. Just gonna give everyone 30 seconds to take a guess. Okay, looks like about 40% of people are, are right there. Okay, and the right answer is? 568 pounds per month. Yes, 568 pounds per month, right? Okay, so thanks for everyone who participated in that poll. Thanks, Hattie, for doing that. Um, 568 pounds per month, right? So there are, apologies, there we go. There are 16 billion pounds of unclaimed benefits in the UK. This is the number we've shared before and we'll continue to share because it's a staggering statistic. And when we look amongst the users with the, uh, the WageStream app, on average, people could be entitled to about 568 pounds a month. Imagine if you got an extra 568 pounds per month in your bank. That would probably be a significant sum of money. That would change some of the decisions that you're able to make. So one of the other things you can do in the app is you can go under the coach tab. You'll see the tile there for invest. Looks just like the, what you see there on the right-hand side of the screen. Do a com you know, complete, you click on that button that says open benefits checker, complete a benefits assessment. Now you're sitting there, you're probably thinking, not for me, I'm, I'm not eligible for benefits, I make too much money or I'm employed or whatever it is. Please, please, please take a moment and do it. And do it for a couple of reasons. First reason is just because you go to work every day, just because you earn money doesn't necessarily mean you're not eligible for some benefits. There are a number of in-work benefits, so I want you to look at those. The second thing is, with all of these government programs and things that are being changed so quickly, it's nearly impossible for anyone to keep up with what's going on and am I eligible, am I not eligible, if I am eligible, how much am I going to get, etc. Invest is going to do some of that work for you in terms of being able to direct you to social tariffs when it comes to broadband and phone, or being able to direct you to energy grants and different things that might be coming out um, tomorrow or subsequently. So take a moment, set up that account, go in and do the benefits check, do it for yourself, do it for your family. Maybe you have family members you could do it for, right? Maybe you have parents who are on pension credit. Maybe you have a disabled relative. This is something that you can do. And by having you know, the power of wage stream in your hand, you're not going to be able to just help you, but you can help your family. So if if you can get 568 pounds a month, you and your family, and maybe your parents also get, you know, that or some amount um, a month, that could, again, be, you know, really good in, in helping you and helping your overall financial well-being. So please do take a moment um, to do that. I won't go through these because we talked about them last time. We're also going to send links out to them in the, um, in the email afterwards. But sources of help for you should you need it in terms of Trussell Trust if you need a food bank, Money Helper if you need help with, um, with debt, with other money questions, and then Step Change and Citizens Advice if you're needing help with things like debt advice and, and find that you're in financial difficulty. Step Change is also accessible under the Coach tab in the app, so feel free if you do need to access them, um, you can just go directly through the app and that will, that will help you. 
So that's it for the slides and kind of the information I wanted to share with you today. I think now we need to spend the last few minutes and I realize that we are slightly over. I can't remember if we went to 4.30 or 4.45 today. Um, but if you do need to go, do feel free to just you know drop off at any point. I realize some of you have meetings or places you need to be, but we are gonna go through um, the, the questions now. Hattie, over to you. Yeah, so we've had quite a lot of really good ones. So I'm just gonna pick some of the more popular ones that I think will really be helpful for everyone. Um, firstly, I think this is a really great one that came in quite near the start, which is, can you ex explain what inflation is and how it affects people? Yeah, great question. So thanks for that, Craig. Um, so at the end of the day, we, the, the, every month or so, the Office of National Statistics, ha, they, they have what they call a basket, right? So they have a number of kind of common things that people buy, petrol, different food items, holidays, blah, 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 all these different things. And they add up all the prices um, for, for those things. And then they compare it over the previous month and the previous year. And that percentage change is what we call inflation, right? And so they're talking about how much basically prices have gone up. So sometimes prices have, you know, a couple of years ago, we would have been saying prices have gone up half a percent or 1% or you know, not even, or maybe prices even dropped. Now that number's being, been driven up quite significantly by petrol and by energy prices. So that's why we're now seeing inflation of like 10.1%. So it's basically the percentage change in overall prices for, for those items that the government considers common items for people. Amazing. Um, another really good one that we've had, um, I think this is when you were speaking about switching bank account. Mm -hmm. so that doesn't swapping bank accounts affect your credit score, then affect borrowing and mortgage applications, et cetera? Great question. And the answer is sometimes. So first of all, um, you can absolutely switch bank accounts anytime you want. And just because you switch bank accounts doesn't mean you have to close the previous one. So um, they are not directly linked to your credit score in that, you know, if I move from, let's say, I don't know, Barclays to Monzo, um, I can have those two accounts. My credit score isn't necessarily going to change. Some lenders, when you're going for a mortgage or different things, might want to see that you've had a bank account for a certain amount of time. And so that could be an issue. Or they might ask you for additional documentation, right? So show me the, the transactions out of one bank account and another bank account so that they can prove you know, how your finances have been managed over a period of time. But it's not necessarily going to impact your credit score. The part that impacts your credit score is if you have an overdraft. Because an overdraft is a credit product, and some of you might be using your overdraft occasionally. If you've got an overdraft and you then move bank accounts and you don't pay off that overdraft, or you just kind of leave it sit there and it goes into arrears, that absolutely can have an impact on your credit score. So you want to make sure that if you are switching banks and you're using your overdraft, that once you've switched bank accounts, contact that bank and say, right, I need to pay off my overdraft agree with me some kind of a, a repayment plan or whatever so we can get that sorted so that it's not hurting your credit. Perfect. Um, there's a lot of questions about vouchers, but I think seeing as there's so many, I think in the follow-up email, I will put some a bit more information about the vouchers in because that seems to be something that people aren't sure about. So look out for the email coming in a couple of days and I'll make sure to put that in. But I think just one more really good one if you're all right to answer one more is towards the start someone said about debt advice and essentially what advice would you give to negotiating debt payments or dealing with debt i know you've mentioned a couple of charities and things but could you talk about that for a minute yeah so a couple of options and first a minute let's talk about the word debt because i think and, and we're seeing more of this especially in our in the wage stream users who have access to coach live we're getting a number of debt queries every day now um we often use the word debt to mean a bad thing, like, oh, I'm in debt, meaning, you know, I'm now in financial difficulty and I have trouble. It doesn't need to mean that, right? You, using credit technically means you're in debt. We just don't call it that. Um, and so a person who's using credit is fine, right? You know, if you're paying it off every month or you know, you're able to keep up the payments and all is good. You may not feel like you're in debt, but you still could feel like times are tough or you're maybe you know, at risk of entering financial difficulty. So whether you're in debt because you've missed payments or you feel like you're just kind of living on the edge and things could get difficult, what I'm about to say applies to you. So please don't wait until, oh my gosh, you know, the, the collectors are at the door, the phone's ringing every day, people are trying to harass me into paying different things. 
that's you know quite far down the path. We want to be able to get you help much, much earlier if possible. So a couple of options you have. First option you have is, as I said before, go into the app under coach. There's the tile to touch on for um, step change. It will take you to their website. They have some amazing resources. You never even have to speak to a person, right? I absolutely understand that it can feel um, difficult or ashamed. You might be ashamed or whatever. Um, and you don't want to speak to a person about it. You might not have somewhere private that you can have that conversation. The good thing about step change is you can go in, you can use some of their tools. So they have a lot of self-serve. They have a chat option as well. So you can do an online chat with a debt advisor or with one of their um, frontline agents before they give you off to a debt advisor to even help you kind of triage and decide, do you need help? It's a really good anonymous way to do, um, to, to, to kind of do it privately and, and in a way that you're comfortable. The other option is you can pick up the phone and call Step Change or the National Deadline or one of these organizations and they will absolutely help you. It's free to you. Um, and that's really important that it's free because also some of you who might be stressed about money, if you're kind of, let's say up at three o'clock in the morning, you turn the radio or the telly or go on TikTok or whatever, you're gonna get spammed with all kinds of ads for all these debt companies that want to help you. And don't they want to help you because they wanna charge you every month to solve your debt problems, whatever solve your debt problems means. And they wanna charge you 30 or 40 or 50 quid a month to do that. Please, 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 whatever you do, do not pay for debt advice in the UK. It's an absolute waste of your money. The outcomes that you will achieve are the same or better if you use Step Change, National Debt Line, Citizens Advice, one of those. Um, and also realize that those individuals, it's not going to be judgmental. They've seen it all before. And actually, one of the things right now of, you know, no matter who you are, good with money, not good with money, um, used to be cushioned, now kind of squeezed because of the financial situation. We're very much similar to kind of how we were all experiencing COVID together. We're absolutely all experiencing this cost of living rise together. And so, you know, now is one of those times where you can really go in and not feel ashamed about needing debt support. Amazing. Thank you so much for that, Eric.